Okay, what's up guys? This is Jeff A and welcome to my channel. We have a very special webcast today because I invited my friends here in US who are former Salesian educators of Don Bosco Makati to share with us their best practices addressing distance learning. So, tune up, don't go anywhere because we are going to share some applications and websites, uh, resources that you can use into your subject area. So, I have here my friends and I'm very excited to this webcast. Okay. Say hi, Sir Karen and Sir Joel. Hi! hi. Hello! Sir Maynard Andrew. Hey! Yeah, former art teacher, no, Sir, Sir, uh, Sir Maynard. Uh, work Ed, Work Ed. Work Ed, yeah. Yep. Uh, Sir Christopher uh, Banag. Para makita ka sa screen. Okay, we also have um, Miss Raquel Aguilar, a former math teacher of uh, Don Bosco. Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, I will let them introduce themselves para mas detailed, no? So, yan. Simulan natin kay Sir Joel and Ma'am Karen. Hello, good morning. I'm Joel Dimano, a former teacher of Don Bosco Technical Institute, Makati. I teach science before in Don Bosco. Then after that, I go to Indonesia where I teach uh, science subjects. Then currently, I'm now teaching here in US. I'm teaching science subjects and I'm handling uh, grades uh, 10 to 12. Hello, my name is Karen Cristel Salazar de Maano. Most of my teaching experience in different countries, I handled preschoolers and elementary pupils. Now, uh, currently, I am a happy homemaker. Thank you, Sir Joel and Ma'am uh, Karen. Now, let's welcome Sir Andrew. All right. So, hi, guys. All right. So, I'm a former work education teacher uh, in Don Bosco. And uh, after that, I used to travel over here in the U.S. And currently, I'm working as an online teacher. I've been doing this online teaching for almost two years now. And I'm currently working as a recruiter and a consultant as well, and handling kids and adults. All right. Wow. So. That sounds good. I know. Thank you, Sir Andrew. <laughs> yeah. Sir Andrew, thank you. Um, I'm kind of not quitting right now. <laughs> All right, our next educator is uh, Mr. Christopher Emanuel Banag, former, uh, former math teacher of Don Bosco Makati. Hello, good afternoon. This is uh, Emmanuel Christopher Banag. I work here as a middle school teacher and um, currently I'm handling grade 8 and grade 9. Thank you, Sir Banag. And last but not the least, Ms. Raquel Aguilar. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Raquel Aguilar and former math teacher in the Bosco Makati for like eight years. Now, I'm currently teaching um, Mathematics 7th grade. So, that's it. Alright, so... Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Well, I'm Mr. Jeffrey Abanto, a, a former music teacher of Don Bosco Makati. And I'm a music teacher here in US too. And I'm, I'm handling grade school music education. Before we share the application and websites and all the resources that you can use into your teaching in online learning or distance learning, let's listen to Ms. Karen Salazar as she discussed the overview of the distance learning. Ms. Karen? Okay, first, before we, as what Mr. Jeffrey said, uh, before we share our different application that you can use, First, let's define distance learning. So, uh, what is distance learning? So, according to our research and based from Dr. Michael, one of the speciali specialists or enthusiasts of distance education, um, he defined distance learning as it's a method of study where teachers and students do not meet in a classroom but use the internet, email, mail, etc. to have classes. And according to Simonson, uh, one of the professor of instructional teaching and distance education, it is defined as institution-based formal education where the learning group is separated 
and where interactive telecommunication systems are used to connect learners, resources, and instructors. So, there are three components that he said. The first one is the concept of distance education is institutionally based. Meaning, uh, this is what differentiates distance education from self-study. Then next, the second component of the definition of distance education is the concept of separation of the teacher and student. So most often, separation is thought of in geographic terms. So teachers are in one location and student in another. The third one is interactive telecommunication where interaction can be synchronous or asynchronous, meaning it can be at the same time or at different time. And lastly, we examine the concept of connecting learners, resources, and instruction. So it should be, the resources should be subjected to instructional design procedures that organize them into learning experiences that promote learning. This means that there are instructors, us, who interact with learners and that resources are available that permit learning to occur. So that's the short um, meaning of distance learning, distance education, online learning or e-learning. All right, thank you Ms. Uh, Karen. So yan yung tinatawag sa atin ngayon sa Pinas na new normal. Kasi here in US, biglang nag-shift tayo from classroom-based education to online learning. So I want to uh, emphasize, ano ba yung mga challenges na na-encounter natin sa online learning? Ayan, pasahan natin kay Sir, Sir Chris. Sir Chris? Well, uh, I think the big challenge is the readiness and the willingness of the students and the teachers. So, marami dito sa, dito sa amin na uh, we are not prepared because of because it it happened suddenly like we have a school on friday and then eventually on the weekend uh the governor announced that there will be no classes on monday so we are not prepared for that so we were instructed to do the distance learning however we are not prepared and the the, the teachers and the students were not to train on how to to do the distance learning so at the very beginning it's very hard Thank you, Sir Chris Barak, for uh, sharing your experience, doing the challenges you encountered uh, doing the online class. How about um, Ms. Raquel Aguilar? Oh, um, actually, same with uh, Mr. Banag. So, we were on a spring break before it happened. So, ang nangyari talagang no readiness for, for every one of us. So, parang nag-declare lang na hindi na kami babalik after the spring break. Um, medyo naging mahirap siya kasi meron kaming mga ESLs. They're, you know, it's distance learning. So definitely, it was difficult for them to reach out to us. So what you need to do first is, kailangan alam nila kung saan sila pupunta. Because that even if you have your own platform, you have your own LMS, kung hindi nila alam on how to access it, where to get it, kahit you assign several lessons, they can't get through it. Useless siya. So, I think the challenge there is reaching out to them. So, kailangan magkaroon ka ng sarili mong, kailangan meron kang sariling way of communicating to them and to their parents. So, aside from email, dapat meron ka, makuha mo yung mga numbers nila. Yung, you know, you have to, you, you have to let them know that you are still with them, even though hindi kayo nagkikita. So, I think that's, that's one of the biggest challenges if paano mo sila mapapagawa ng mga bagay na na hindi kayo nakikita, you know, na hindi kayo masyado nakikita, except, of course, when you have conferences. So, I think it's the communication. Yun ang pinakamahirap na, na challenge ko. Thank you, Ms. Raquel. Um, how about Sir Joel? Well, sa, sa part naman namin dito, one of the challenges is the um, resources. Yes, madaling mag-shift ng distance learning, pero yung availability of resources particularly on the part of the of the students hindi madali so kasi hindi lahat ng bata may internet access hindi lahat ng bata may device sa ibang county they can provide chromebook one is to one chromebook and ang um, the students can can bring their chromebooks 
with them in, uh, in our county so hindi so hindi lahat ng bata may resources so kung mag-post ka man ng assignments online hindi lahat makakagawa so because the resources that they have is uh, very much limited so hindi rin ganung kadali hindi ganung ka flexible though you can give instructions you can make communications using email or phone calls but in terms of how the student will respond to your emails how the students will respond to your assignments or to your task given to them online it's not that easy yeah mm. because uh, yeah kasi i think that's one also na g- mahihirapan din sa philippines na challenge din natin yun okay. so draw well kasi yung mga estudyante ko minsan walang laptop alam mo yon so walang hotspot even if they are provided with that kahit kahit most of them were given laptops and hotspot in their school. Pag wala yung connection sa bahay, kunyari hindi sila nakapag... Al- alam mo yun, yung marami silang gumagamit sa bahay kasi may mga, may mga families, like, ang dami nila. Tapos, nagsishare sila sa isang hotspot and everything. I think yun yung isa pang challenge doon na paano, paano nila... Kung kunyari, isa lang yung laptop, tapos apat silang nag-aaral, paano nila gagawin mm-hmm. lahat yun? Especially if may, may schedule sila for a conference. So, siguro... Maybe that's one of the reasons why when I'm having some conference, just like few students show up. And then later on, they will tell me that some of, you know, their siblings are using the laptop. Kasi wala na rin ma-provide. Kasi sumobrang parang, sobrang dami na rin yung gumagamit. Even if, um, even if the government gave them like the chance na magkaroon ng mga free, you know, free na connection and everything. Mm-hmm. So, I think I agree with you na talagang ang hirap din with the with the connection. Thank you Sir Joel. So this is really an unprecedented event in education as a whole no. Hindi lang sa Pilipinas, hindi lang sa US pero sa buong sa buong globally nag nag-iiba na yung trend of education. And everybody, every school and every system of education is trying to cope up with this a changing trend in approaches and strategies in education. So, um, next natin si Sir Maynard. Uh, tuturo ka rin ng online, di ba? Ano, mm-hmm. Pero hindi, ano ba to? Hindi, hindi ako masyadong familiar sa work mo ngayon eh. Is it education, ano din ba? Based din ba to? Or... So, ang um, ESL teacher or English as second language teacher, uh, most of our students kasi before, ano, Puro Chinese lang. Chinese, Japanese, alright. So from China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Japan, alright. So, nung una talaga nahirapan ako mag-adjust kasi, uh, di ba from formal school, then, uh, are you sure I'm going to t- how I'm going to handle my students uh, using my computer? So, so, so una, ma- mahirap, alright. Pero sa China kasi, uh, although English is part of their curriculum, pero hindi nila nagagamit masyado. So, they come up with this kind of uh, technology on having English online. Alright. Na kahit sa bahay, uh, makakapun- makakapasok sila, makaka-enroll sila. So, yun yung magiging challenge sa Philippines sa situation ngayon. Kasi, kumbaga sa atin, sa educational system natin, pwede, may mga extracurricular tayo na pwede kang mag ng piano lesson. So, parang ganun lang sa Chinese people. So, Um, so ngayon, ang magigil ang mangyayari sa Pilipinas, parang ganito na talaga yung way of uh, teaching natin. So <clears throat> I I don't know how they're going to handle uh, students kasi kami maximum namin 6 students lang. So kaya focus kami every student. So na na-focus namin kung ano yung lesson namin then uh nagbibigay kami talaga ng progress report individually. So, for both students, uh, mga, sa kids, for example, it's a video class. Then, for adults, yung mga business English classes namin, uh, audio classes lang siya. So, I think yun yung magiging challenge ng mga teachers. So, paano nila i- 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 bibigyan ng feedback every, in- every student? Alright. So, sa music, no? as a music teacher, ang, challenge, uh, ang mga challenges na na-encounter ko, unang-una, Madali magturo ng concept eh pagdating sa online, di ba? Pero ang isa sa pinaka-challenging sa music education kasi pag may concept ka, dapat may application yan. So, mm-hmm. instrumento. Hindi well, hindi lahat ng isudyante ay may instrument sa bahay. Like, like 
na na-access nila sa school. Like meron kami sa school na guitar, meron kami ukulele, flute, uh, may keyboard kami sa guitar. Pero sa bahay nila individually wala silang uh, instrument. So yun yung isa sa mga challenges sa, sa music. How can they apply the concept, the musical concepts that uh, we are teaching kung wala silang instrument? So puro concept lang siya no. So, yeah, mamaya sasagutin natin 'yan. Bali, gusto ko lang i-add no, yung etong distance learning or yung online online class, hindi na siya bago eh. Yeah. 90s pa nang ginagawa na 'to, no. Pero hindi sa education. Okay? Hindi siya hindi siya rampant sa education natin kasi nga ang ang system ng education natin is face to face, classroom based tayo. Kaya ngayon, ang mga teachers natin ay nahihirapan mag-cope uh, up with this new kind of setting kasi nga hindi sila sanay makipag-usap sa camera. Hindi sila sanay makipag-usap. Eh, diba, un, nung, nung first time natin ginawa, parang ang weird eh. Kasi kausap, hindi, hindi ka sanay na makita yung sarili mo na kinakausap mo yung camera at kinakausap mo yung laptop. Huh? So yun yung unang challenge natin, yung ano nila hindi sila sanay na uh, gumamit ng technology. Pangalawa, hindi lahat ng teachers ay magaling or techy pagdating sa sa gadget, no. Hindi sila marunong magkalikot ng mga mag mag uh, manipulate ng Zoom, mag-connect sa internet, hanapin ng ganito mga website, i-download to sa ganito, gumawa ng PowerPoint, i-share screen. Sa iba talagang puzzle 'yan. As in blank blank sila diyan hindi nila hindi nila uh, kayang i-absorb yung ganyang uh, proseso ng ng marami kang ginagawa sa computer before you execute your lessons no so yun yung ating uh, mga challenges diyan and kaya tayo gumawa ng webcast na to hindi lang para pag-usapan yung mga problema kasi existing na yan eh uh, all the challenges alam niya alam niya ng mga teachers now nandito tayo para uh, i-discuss sa kanila ano yung mga interventions na ginawa nyo as in effective na na, na, na 'di ba dun sa mga sinabi nating challenges ano yung mga interventions na ginawa natin na naging effective para ma-execute natin ng 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 maayos yung lessons natin at naging productive ang assessment at uh, na, alam natin na natuto yung mga inatu, na, nakakonect tayo sa bata engage sila sa lesson on task sila although eto nga no hindi sanay din ang mga students na na nag-aaral using the laptop no hindi hindi sila sanay na nag-a-answer uh, using online at marami sa kanila hindi talaga nagsho-show up pag uh, online class katulad ng sinabi ni Miss Raquel no konti lang talaga yung um na uh, uh, um, nag nag online class or umaattend sa online class okay dun sa mga challenges kindly uh, briefly lang na i-discuss ano yung mga ginawa niyo interventions at best practices natin uh, addressing the online or distance learning Sula natin kay Sir Banag. Sir Banag. Sa akin, since since they they are not they are not used to it, they are not familiar with it. So I just simply do whatever I do inside the classroom and then place it online. So in order for them to cope up, kailangan alam nila yung yung ginagawa nila. So basic routine. Kung ano yung ginagawa namin sa classroom, I just post it online. So at the start, whatever we are, whatever app that we are using. We just post it online so that they can cope up, so that they can do their work. However, however, this is very limited. The resources are very limited. Nga. So you need to download some apps. Na kailangan, kailangan makatch yung skills na na kailangan mo don na na ma target. So when you introduce another app, this is the time I give um, Zoom meeting or conference para maging familiar sila dun sa app na yon. And at the same time for those <coughs> for those students who are not um, who don't have access uh, 24 hours or uh, 24 hours internet, we simply give a uh, newsletter. So we give um newsletter na nandun lahat for lahat ng activities for the entire week so that they will know what to do. So it's the purpose of the e-learning also of the blended learning which is they have their own self pace thank you sir banag uh, sir joel uh, since hindi lahat nga may internet sa bahay hindi lahat may access uh, sa chromebook so 
before pa magkaroon uh, kami ng distance learning, so talagang meron akong Google Classroom. So ginagamit ko na siya even before. So in classroom, so lahat ng online activities, instructions, so inililink ko sa Google Classroom. So kaya hindi na siya, hindi na bago sa bata. So ang naging problem lang is, uh, papaano naman yung mga bata na walang internet access or walang device sa bahay. So what we did is uh, kung ano yung assignments na na ginawa in-upload ko sa Google Classroom. So is gumawa ako ng hard copy. Gumawa ako ng hard copy parang 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 ganito. Okay. Uh, learning packets. So naggawa kami ng survey. So ilan sa out of uh, Mr. D's class, ilan yung bata na walang internet access, na hindi maha- walang device. So nung nakuha ko yung number So, nag-provide ako ng learning packets. Then, yun ang dinala ko sa school. And the school helped me to um, deliver those modules to, to our students. So, um, para na rin hindi sila maiiwan. So, may mga bagong apps akong in-introduce. Kung ba- bago gamitin siya ng bata, meron akong orientation. Meron akong uh, Zoom meeting sa kanila every afternoon. So, this is how we are going to navigate the app. This is how you're going to submit your assignments through this app. So, it's like a step-by-step yeah, step process. Step-by-step step process and you have to uh, direct them. Kasi kung basta mo nilang ibibigay sa kanila lahat, so wala kang mahukuhang output. So parang talagang you have to deliver uh, the instructions little by little hanggang makuha nila at hanggang makapagpalo sila. Pero chances pa rin na meron siyang hindi magko-comply. So, but uh, still, teacher uh, should never stop. Uh, As what I have observed with you, uh, meron talaga siyang time frame na specific time na may phone calls. Talagang tin- tinatawagan niya isa-isa yung mga bata. And he uses different kinds of platforms, not only Zoom, Google Hangouts, phone, email, lahat talaga ng form na pwedeng makipag-communicate sa mga kids, he uses that. And at the same time, I also observed in him that he prepared a video on how they can navigate. If, for example, the kid cannot understand how to use Google Hangouts or any kind of software, he provided a video of himself explaining the step-by-step process on how to use it. So that even yung mga parents, they will be aware of on how to use it and makakatulong sila dun sa anak nila kung paano nila gagamitin yun. Thank you, Sir Joel. Uh, Miss Aguilar? Um, sa akin naman kasi, like um, kay Sir Chris, yung mga ginagamit ko sa classroom, kasi meron silang sariling LMS, so meron na silang, sari- kumbaga pag nag in sila doon, makikita na nila lahat nung activities for the day. So, ang nilalagay ko dun is may variation ako. Ay, hindi ako nagbibigay ng, kunyari, ang competency ko is um, solving one-step equation. Hindi lang siya basta isa lang. Kasi, paano pag hindi siya accessible sa laptop? Yung binigay ko na yon. So, I make it sure na meron, meron akong isa pang activity, similar competency, but, you know, mag- pwede nilang gamitin yung cellphone nila or what if they don't wanna do it like a quiz type, ba? Diba? So, meron din na parang game type. So, basta, basta pareho yung laman, it doesn't matter. Kasi ang, ang goal mo lang naman is may matutunan sila dun sa, dun sa i- i- ibinigay mo sa kanila. So, I think that's, that's one of the things na medyo kaya okay. Kasi even if wala sila, kumbaga, sometimes kasi ang reklamo ng mga bata, miss, hindi ko alam kung saan hahanapin. Miss, hindi ko alam kung you know um, what 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 are you going to do so sometimes the parents will will send me a message or even the students will send me an email asking me miss what's the code at least i can give the code through email i can give the code um, through a text message kahit na hindi sila papasok sa platform na pang school although it's better kapag uh, pumasok sila sa platform kasi Diretso siya, step by step. So, ito gagawin mo, you watch a video, and then you answer this, you go to this. Kasi naka, naka ano ka eh, kung ano yung parang ginagawa mo sa classroom from introduction down to assessment. But since ganito nga yung, alam mo na, yung challenge na hirap sila, 
na magganap ng tsaka syempre sarili-sariling dahilan na rin yung mga mga bata natin na mahina yung internet connection bigyan mo sila binigyan ko sila ng time na pwede nila ang gamitin yung cellphone nila so para mas mag, mas madali then i made it sure na open yung yung communication ko with them through email i make it sure na i remind them of the deadline of the task that they have to do and i i got my google voice number para you know medyo nakaangkla siya sa number ko sa sa personal number ko so magno-notify agad miss i have a question with this so para lang kayong para lang kayong nagse-send ng text message sa isa't isa tapos i-send nila yung image okay now pare maano namin siya kumbaga we can fix it together so i think yung yung ganung practice was ano uh, worked for me Alright, thank you miss uh, Aguilar Sir Maynard as expert in online <laughs> online class no kasi parang everyday life mo ganito yung ginagawa mo since lumipat mm-hmm. ka ng US no uh, ESL uh, teacher ka na Yes so, sir yep. All right so I'll be talking more on technical side ng ESL teaching okay right. so I want to share uh, to you guys my portal that we are actually using Okay Okay can you see it Yep. Yes. All right. So, ito yung portal ng company ko. Okay. So, so sa case kasi ng China. Okay. So, ang students or your parents mag-enroll sila, bibili nila yung yung package namin. Okay. So, every lessons is or every lesson divided siya into unit. Then, um, may fixed schedule talaga siya. So, ito yung itsura ng portal namin. Okay. So, ready na talaga siya. May lesson plan na i-execute na lang ng teacher. So, madali para sa amin uh, i-handle yung lesson. Then, it's really interactive. So, meron kaming class rules. Okay. And it's a audio. this one is an audio uh, audio class and a video class combined. Yeah. Alright. So, it's like that. Then, yung portal namin, interactive talaga siya. Na, nadadrag namin yung studyante. All right. If we want to focus in one student, we can drag. It, ito yun tinatawag namin blackboard. All right. Then we have the different function. Okay. We have the mute function, then audio function. Nung una, nahirapan kami i-handle yung estudyante. Kasi uh, yung iba, uh, nag-make noise. So ngayon, uh, what we have now, we have IT support. Okay. So I think if yung... Philippine educational system, ia-adapt nila yung ganitong uh, learning system. Kailangan mag invest talaga sila sa good portal, tapos may IT support talaga. So in case, what they're going to do kapag may technical problem, so sino yung magtitake over ng classes? Kasi kami may ganun, kaya may mga standby teachers kami. So if uh, we're having a class, something problem, um, yung mga estudyante, makakatawag sila ng IT support namin. And same time, may mga IT support na tutulong sa kanila. So, ganito yung nangyayari sa online teaching sa China. Madali naman, let's say, may technical issue, madali naman nilang na-address. Yes, kasi uh, real-time, may mga uh, standby te- teachers uh-huh. and IT support kami. That's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sir May- Maynard, uh, sa technical side, no, pag sinating, sinabi natin technical side, um, we're talking about the, the devices. Mm-hmm. Laptop. Ano, meron bang meron bang specs na kailangan para you know iba kasi pag online di ba? Uh, may mga specs na required para makapag ano ka makapag online ka. Kailangan ba na webcam? Uh, yung is- connection MVP. speed. Mm-hmm. Meron bang ano yan, uh, requirements para smooth ang ang connection niya or meron bang mga kailangan gawin sa sa computer sa laptop bago magsimula ng online class okay got it so as part of the recruitment team so bago pa lang namin i-hire yung mga new consultant or new teachers namin um makikita na namin kung qualified ba yung mga teachers so based on uh, the equipment they're using for example yung we are requiring them to have a noise canceling uh, microphone headset then yung spec nung computer tapos yung working environment nila then yung internet connection we we actually um advising them to use a LAN connected 
yung li- yung direct connection sa laptop kasi yung wa- yung wifi connection mm. kasi sometimes naglalag so ni-require namin talaga yun na kailangan strong internet connection speed talaga so usually ano yung time na yung paano yung schedule routine so you have breaks as well and how many hours per per class yeah per class okay for CABC uh we we're actually offering a 40 minute class and it's a fixed schedule for example they will be enrolling one class monday monday thursday class and uh beijing time yon then if 8 o'clock to 8:40 sa amin kasi minimum core i3 for ayan yung specs. windows oh mm-hmm. sa apple hindi ko i'm not sure for apple mm-hmm. kasi yung pinag-usapan natin eh, yung kayang i-handle yung Uh, multiple, yung portal. Mm-hmm. Oo, yung portal. Saka, hindi ko alam, pag nag ka ba, for for example, lahat ng students mo nakasum ka 25. Sabihin natin, minimum 25 or 30 students. Nakaka-apekto ba yun sa bandwidth or nakaka-apekto ba specs ng computer mo to handle that that uh, number? Hmm... Sino ba? Ako ba or sila? Oo, oh, isa <laughs> Hindi kasi, hindi, sa amin kasi nga, may sarili kaming portal. Uh. So, yung portal namin, yun yung required. Um, mm. I3 at least. Ano? Mm-mm, at least I3. Mm. So, based sa mga, ano, sa mga US teachers, ano yung uh, ginagamit nyo? Is it Zoom? Then, how many students? So sa amin, ngayon nag-on distance learning kami. So yung ano na namin, ginagamit namin Zoom. Zoom. So pero base sa experience ko, kaya siyang mag-accommodate ng 100 participants. But limited time, mm-hmm. correct? No, since uh, parang pinurchase na ng district, oh. so hindi na siya limited. So kasi dati yung experience ko, Parang 40 minutes. After 40 minutes, you have to log in again. Kasi tapos na yung ano mo. Yung, yung time mo. So, pero sa ngayon, sa experience ko ngayon, I don't know kung bumili, nag-purchase yung county. We can use the Zoom for unlimited. So, dire-diretso, hindi, hindi na kami napuputol. Oo, oh, may ibang county na... Hindi nila advisable na gumamit ng Zoom kasi sa county namin bawal mag-Zoom dahil nga uh, may mga report na alam mo na may may FBI um, advisory na may mga Zoom meetings na nahahack at nagpapakita ng mga indecent uh, uh, yeah, videos and pictures. Mm-hmm. Lalo na, yun ang iniwasan ng county namin. Ay, hindi ko alam kay sa county nyo, Sir, ba, sa, Sir, Sir Banag, um, allowed kayo gumamit ng Zoom? Mm-hmm. Since um, nagdagdag sila ng um, additional security feature like yung password, yung ano, so we continue doing Zoom meetings. But before, we were advised to... Um, limit our Zoom meetings because of of the security. Kasi minsan may mga may mga taong nakapasok na hindi naman talaga doon. And then they're looking for for something like yung background, yung background mo para mm-hmm. para mag ano ng ano whatever kung ano man yung masamang intention nila. Yeah, so far yung Zoom kasi ang medyo talagang magandang gamitin. No? Malino yung videos, Uh, at mali, malinaw yung audio and synchronized talaga unlike dun sa ibang platform medyo hindi siya user friendly at nag nag ano siya naglalag siya pag uh, pag sobrang dami na ng ng user ganun din ba sa Zoom na experience na ba pag 25 students ang present maingay syempre lahat nagsasalita or may mga magulong students sa Zoom kasi maganda dahil meron kang uh, feature na pwede mong i-mute lahat ng mga students mo. Mm-hmm. Tapos, pati yung video nila, kung yung video nila, pwede mo rin silang i-kick out. So, mm-hmm. once they once they, re- they were being kicked out, they cannot go back again to the Zoom meeting. Mm-hmm. And then, 
sa math, it is very effective because of the whiteboard. So, for example, ito, share screen. So, I can use, while, I, while I'm teaching the concept, since it is a math, we need, we need to model the equation so we can solve it using the Zoom. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So, ngayon, they will share also um, resources, websites, na uh, pwede maging references no sa math science at hindi porket uh, sa, ginagamit lang nito sa math at, at science or ano man yung subject area nila eh hindi nyo na pwedeng gamitin sa subject nyo so try to find a way paano mo siya mag uh, makoconnect dun sa subject area mo at how how will you uh, how can you utilize this application software and websites to fit for your needs Okay, uh, excited na akong makita itong mga software nyo, application. Kasi pwede ko rin ito magamit sa, ano eh, sa music class, no? So, sino gusto mag-start? Joel. Uh, Joel? Okay. Joel. Joel. Volunteer siya. Sir Joel. Uh, bali yan, mag-share screen si Sir Joel. Mm -hmm. Alright. First one that I'm going to share is a Pano form. Pano. Paano ba ginagamit ang Pano Form? What's Pano Form? This app lets you make your own VR creation just using crayons, paper, and a mobile device. So in science, marami kaming mag-activities wherein sometimes yung bata nagdo-drawing. Even in arts, uh, pwede rin itong gamitin. Dito sa Pano Form, may download kang uh, grid wherein dito ang bata magkikreate ang drawing niya. So once saka nag-create siya ng drawing sa grid, there are three there are three types of grid na pwedeng mong gamitin, basic, infinite, and horizon. So downloadable naman siya, that's free. So then you allow the students kung mayroong activity, you give the grid to your students and let them draw. Let them uh, make their composition. And after that, take a picture of your composition and crop the corners of the grid. So once na tapos na yung Activity niya, nakapag-sketch na siya, na, na nagyan ng colors, and so on and so forth. You go to the Panoform tool. Then you upload your composition. Then, hindi lang, once na in-upload mo siya yung, yung composition mo sa, sa tool, sa Panoform tool, hindi na lang siya plain drawing. Hindi na lang siya plain sketch. So, kumbaga, you can have the VR experience. So, magiging three-dimensional na yung yung artwork ng bata. Pwede siya sa iPad, pwede siya sa cellphone. So, mostly mo ng bata sa atin may, may cellphone. So, once meron silang cellphone and they can go to this platform tool, they can enjoy viewing their artwork, not just a simple drawing, but in a uh, VR, a VR experience, virtual reality. So, ayun, yung unong ginagamit ko. So, lalo na sa biology, so, ang daming mga kailangan kong activity within ng bata kailangan i-draw itong let's say for example a uh, 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 stages of cell cycle based from my observation they enjoy and once uh, you allow them uh, navigating uh, the device their cell phones they can you can give them an ownership of their own learning the next app that i'm using right here is the google expedition this google expedition is all about AR and VR. So by the way, ang Google Expedition, downloadable siya sa Google Play or Apple Store. It adds digital elements to a live view by using the camera on smartphone. Before ba naglaro kayo ng Pokemon Go? Jeffrey, naglaro ka ba ng Pokemon Go? Si Jeff. Mobile Legend ako eh. Pero <laughs> try ka rin niya Pokemon. No? Hindi ka nag-aware kayo sa Pokemon Go, di ba? Uh, Hindi ka nagpupunta sa ibang lugar. <laughs> Meron. <laughs> oh, yan yan, pre. Pokemon. Yung pumunta ka sa, sa court or saan man, then maghanap ko ng Pokemon. So, ang idea niya, oh, AR. So, it adds digital elements to a live view by using the camera and the smartphone. So, while VR, uh, it gives you a complete immersion experience. So, parang talagang nandun ka sa, let's say, for example, nandun ka sa, sa location that shuts out the physical world. So, right now, ito yung kayang i-offer ng Google Expeditions, AR and VR. Do we have uh, mixed reality and extended reality? But right now, so sa software ng Google Expedition, 
AR and VR pa lang ang pwede nating ma-enjoy. So, ito yung... Pag nakadownload ka sa Google Play or, apps, or sa App Store ng Google Expedition, so meron kang search, search bar. Applicable siya sa, sa mga subjects like uh, arts and culture, landscapes, science. So, pwede kang pumili kung gusto mo ay AR, lahat ng AR ay magpapopulate dito. So, eto animals of the crustaceans or VR, lahat makikita mo, ecosystem. Ito yung mga samples ko ng augmented reality. So, ito pictures to sa backyard namin. So, once pumili yung, let's say, pumili ang teacher ng isang topic niya about, let's say, for example, um, Ring of Fire or, let's say, the lessons about earth science. Once nag uh, ginamit ng bata yung AR lalabas yung mga information about uh, Ring of Fire so they can enjoy hindi lang to mga limited as Google images they can navigate they can really enjoy they can they can see 360 view they can zoom in they can zoom out and the good thing here is as you can see dun sa mga tabs sa baba meron mga informations na pwedeng ma-enjoy ng bata as they na- as they navigate the AR of that sort of concept they have the informations so and the teacher can give these informations in the end pwede siyang pwedeng kunin to ng teacher yung information nito at pwede niyang ilagay sa kanyang formative assessment so yan for AR and these are some examples of uh, VR Ito naman yung VR. So, pwedeng gumawa rin ng bata. Teacher can give an assignment to the students uh, to make their DIY um, VR box. So, pwedeng ilagay ng bata yung kanilang cellphone sa VR box or they can only tap this icon and pwede na mag-shift dun sa VR experience. Ito na yung pwedeng makita ng bata. So, then the, the same thing with AR. Meron siyang mga um, informations na pwedeng inavigate ng bata. And on that part of the teacher, as I said a while ago, uh, pwede rin itong kunin ng teacher. Yung mga informations right here, pwede rin kunin ng teachers and nilagay niya sa kanyang assessment. So let's say, let's say for example, okay, for this uh, Friday, this would be your um, assignment. So view ecology in uh, VR. Then on Monday, teacher can give a uh, follow-up questions or can give formative assessments. And the teacher will base her formative assessment based from the information that is loaded here. So it's a good experience. Mga um, sample VR pictures of uh, um, VR experience in astronomy. That's uh, This is the uh, third one, I think. Uh, quiver. The idea of this quiver is print, color, and play. So it's something like also augmented reality. Ang idea nitong quiver is um, at first look para pa lang para lang siyang simple coloring. But once ginamit mo yung Quiver Vision app which is downloaded uh, available sa Google Play and App Store. Once dinownload mo tong Quiver version, ta uh, Quiver Vision, ito yung mga pwedeng coloring pa. So plants and so pwedeng siyang kulay ng bata. Then, once na nakulay ng bata, pwede mo siyang gamitin formative assessment kasi once ginamit mo yung app, mag-turn siya into um, augmented reality. Yeah, the my student color, um, Bumblebee, then they can enjoy. So, kasi once in-scan na yung QR code dito sa page ng... Dito sa page, sa baba, makikita na yan. Once na-scan na siya, they so, mag-turn into, reality. para magiging maya, it, it will turn into reality. So, parang mo sa screen mo, lalabas yung si Bumblebee. So, hindi na lang siya plain. Ano to, uh, sir? Cellphone application to or sa laptop? Uh, cellphone. Pwede sa cellphone, pwede sa iPad. Quiver, you, d- you just download the Quiver Vision. Mm. So, pag na-scan na yung QR code, lalabas yes. yan? Uh, yes, lalabas ito automatic. Nice. And may, may animation siya. Pwede siyang mag-jump. Pwede, but once tin up mo yung screen, mm-hmm. it will jump, it, can, it will dance, so on and so forth. So, hindi ka pwedeng gumawa ng sarili mong drawing? Provided Ay, hindi. Drawing. hindi. Oh, kasi hindi. may QR sila. Uh-huh. Oh, kasi may QR. May yep. QR code na scan yung, yung app. So, yeah. lahat. Kung let's say sciences, uh, you, you can choose uh, yung mga 
depende sa subject mo kung ano yung mga available coloring packs. Hmm. Okay yan, no? sa art din. No? Mga... Oo, sa art. Maganda siya sa art. Ito, yan. So, kinulayan ng bata, then uh, nagpopulate yung yung augmented reality. Then, may mga questions sila dito. Pwede mo siyang gamitin as formative assessment because uh, at these question marks, mayroong mga quest, series of questions that um, the students will answer. Let's say, for example, label, cytoplasm, something, and so on and so forth. Okay, and the uh, last point sa sharing ko. Oh, so, since isa sa mga challenge din sa science teacher is um, yung pag-hold ng uh, labs activity. Kasi hindi naman available ang material sa bahay. So, the only thing that we can do is um, delivering the, the lab virtually. So, and I'll be sharing uh, some links or some websites where you can use in uh, biology, chemistry, and physics. This website is uh, virtual labs. Uh, lahat ng experiments dito, lahat ng lab works dito is uh, available uh, free, for free. You can have a full access. Hello, lab assistant. Today, we'll view the gram-stained yogurt sample with a microscope to get an idea okay. of the kind of bacteria contaminating it. To learn more about the purpose and techniques of gram staining, please take a look at the gram staining virtual lab. So, yeah. So, uh, meron kong parang susunod itong voice or assistant. Ipa-follow lang ng bata. So, advice ko kung mga gantong labs. So, uh, very um, important kung ang gagamitin ng bata is computer or laptop kasi there are some um, instances wherein the student will drag uh, the tools and so on and so forth. So marami. So marami dito. Ito lahat is uh, free. So ito ay bi- biology and chemistry. And this one, I think ito naman, next slide, ginagamit na rin sa Pinas because when I was still in Dun Bosco, Makati, I'm still using Bioman Biology. There are some good stuff here. Uh, even formative assessments, quizzes, and so on and so forth. We can we can use this. And last one, virtual lab, fully interactive simulations in which students perform experiments, collect data, and answer questions to assess their understanding. So, eto yung lab naman na to, very pang high school na siya. So, kasi mostly eto is anatomy and physiology and biology. All of these uh, sites are free, uh, full access. You can also get some formative assessments aside from uh, doing, uh, aside from the the lab itself. Mamero na rin siyang available na practices uh, in relation to the lab that they perform. So so far, that's the only thing that I can share. So the apps and websites in line with uh, these websites only for sciences, but for for the apps that I mentioned earlier, uh, the quiver, the expedition, pwede siyang magamit in other subjects yung mga apps, but for these um, websites, it's only for science. That's it, Jeff. All right. So and then I think okay. Thank you, Sir Joel. That is very informative sharing. And to our science teachers, so you can try those uh, applications, yung mga VR natin, no? sa Quiver, those applications and websites, you can try it uh, to integrate to your lessons, to make it more interactive. Okay, um, let's hear it from Sir Christopher Banag. Hello, good morning again. So I'm here to share to you some other apps that I'm using now, we all know that math is a skill subject, so we cannot learn math by simply one sitting. We need a lot of practice, so I prefer to share it to you, the IXL. So, the IXL is offering a 30 days trial for you to experience what is IXL. So, ito mga teachers, pwede nyo tong gamitin uh, para sa mga bata nyo. After 30 days, it will expire and then hindi nyo, hindi nyo naman gamit yung platform pero uh, you're allowed to to practice at least 5 practice a day. Ano bang may kita natin dito sa IXL? All the learning competencies in uh, involving math from, from kinder to uh, high school. So, we have until calculus or pre-calculus. So all you have to do is just to go to the Google and search for free IXL account. And then choose the first one. 
Now, once you choose that, it will give you a 30-day IXL trial wherein you can add your students, you can add your rosters here, and then they can practice a specific skill in mathematics. So I have, for example, I have your two students. So I have Jeff and Erin. So for example, I want them to practice a specific skill in math. For example, multi-step equation. So I just need to type it on the address bar. I mean, on the search bar here. All right, so once you type in, it will give you different standards and different grade level. So sometimes they have same standards or same competencies, but different grade level. That means um, it will give you uh, different complexity of that problem. So for example, I choose this eighth grade standard. Now, one good thing about this IXL is the image is the self pace wherein students will become independent in doing their work so they have here the learn with it with an example so all they have to do is just to click that at the very start so that they will have an example of what what they're supposed to do so for example here solve for s so this is the question and this is the main idea of that question and this is how they're going to solve it. So once the students see the step-by-step, -step, they can uh, imitate it and then they can practice on their own. So they will go back to the practice here and then they will solve the problem. Now, one good thing, another good thing about this is the immediate feedback. We're in, uh, the system will give you will give you the correct answer on how to solve that. If ever the student failed to answer it, the system will give you will give you a feedback on how to solve it. For example, 2 is equal to 5 minus n. So I'll put a wrong answer here, 5. So once I click submit, and if I didn't correct, if I didn't got it right, it will say here, the correct answer is this. And then there's an explanation here. So, so it will be it will be convenient to the teacher because they don't need to explain everything. The student will become independent in doing their work. So it's a step by step. The all of the solutions will be given here. So if if they got it, now uh, on the side here on the side, you will see the questions answered by the student and the number of minutes that the student spent in answering this. And then the SMART score, this is basically the percentage of their correct answers. So for example, four plus five, nine. So let's put nine here. So if the student got it right, then you have, you mm -hmm. will accumulate here the 10 points. So this will be, sometimes this, we consider this as their uh, grade on that particular skill. So one good thing about it, another good thing about it is the, the level of difficulty. So as the student increase their scores, the level of difficulty of the problem will also increase. Mm. So for example, if they got 43, the complexity of the problem will increase also. As they reach to 90, the problem will become difficult for them. This is a game changer for all the teachers because they can immediately they have this analyt they have this analytics wherein they can live monitor their students. So once they click the analytics and then once they click the live, they can monitor the number of students who are logged in to to their IXL and who are the who are practicing on the IXL. So for example, uh, in this case, I don't have students who are practicing it right now. And then another, thi another thing here is the trouble spot wherein the teacher can identify what particular uh, area or problem that the students are, are having difficulty. Another good thing about this is the trouble spot. You can see a specific problem or a specific work of the students wherein they're, they're having problem 
with it. So let's have an example here. So I have here a trouble spot. I click the trouble spot and then it will give me a list of items or specific questions that the students are having trouble. So for example, in this case, when I assign this, this particular standard to, to my students, the circumference of a circles, there are few students here who are having trouble answering this particular question. So in this case, you can immediately give them feedback or uh, remediation on how to do this. So that's IXL. That's this is a good application. So um, I suggest that you could try it, as, especially at this time we're in. We have limited communication with the students. So if you have any question about this, you can email me, and I'm happy to answer it. All right. So the next one is. I know that we are having difficulty giving assignments to students who doesn't have 24-7 internet access. What I'm doing is I gave them a newsletter. So this is also, this is more.com. So right now they, they have a free trial of this one. I think you can create at least five newsletter. So this is an example of my newsletter. So for example, this, this newsletter that I sent last um, spring break, after spring break rather. What good thing about this is they can access it through their phone. So all you have to do is just to send this link or text it or message it and then they can access it. Basically, I put everything in the newsletter. So what I have here is the weekly challenge. I gave them non-routine word problems and, and if they solve it correctly, they will get a prize. And then I put it here what to expect this week. So basically Monday we give, we push out new lessons and then Tuesday, Wednesday, that will be their practice day. And then Thursday, that will be our review. And then the fifth day of the class will be our assessment day. So I'm also handing honors class and I'm giving them different assignments. Uh, the good thing about this is you can put everything, all of your resources on this, on this newsletter. So it's very informative. Like you can put videos, you can put um, pictures of whatever, whatever resources that you have. So what, what I did here is I put everything, I put a link. So for example, in this Friday, all they have to do is just to click the link and then they will, they will immediately proceed to the classwork. All right, so LMS is very important. The learning management is very important because it will organize all your work. This is, this is my weekly agenda. Well, I think that will be all. Um, and if you need some resources like the videos and um, other classwork, I have it on my Google file, so you can just email me anytime. That will be all. Thank you, uh, Sir Banat, for your awesome presentation, for your awesome uh, sharing. So, next natin sa si Ms. Aguilar. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going to share um, some of the things that I've been doing in my um, class for the past two months. So, the first one, these are some of the ones that I usually use a uh, cell phone. So, yun yung sinasabi ko kanina na codes. I think most of you there in the Philippines are familiar with this, especially yung Kahoot. So, yan yung mga um, ginagamit ko, pero you can look over sa internet kung paano siya gawin. Kasi itong mga apps na to, very easy siya, tapos codes lang siya. So, kung wala talagang laptop, pwede sa cell phone. So, Kahoot, Quizzes, Quizlet, GameKit, and Khan Academy. So, they are free. So, pwede kayong mag-download ng app sa phone, pwede din sa portal nyo or sa LMS nyo. So, more or less, these are um, games sila. So, medyo mas ano sila sa games para mas interactive. Pero, ang isha-share ko sa inyo, so, I just um, sharing this five. Pero, ang 
pinaka share ko sa inyo is Ed Puzzle. So, Ed Puzzle, what is Ed Puzzle? So, actually, it is a an easy to use platform that uses video to engage students. So, kasi basically tayo mahilig tayo, di ba? Even sa face to face sa uh, classroom, nagpapa watch tayo ng video, magbibigay tayo ng guide questions. And then after natin magbigay ng guide questions, discussion. Or after ng um, example, after ng lesson natin, meron namang uh, mga reinforcement, nagbibigay din tayo ng video. So, aning Ed Puzzle? So, Ed Puzzle, it uses video. Meron siyang plat Ed Puzzle video. So, yung Ed Puzzle videos, usually yun yung mga na upload na mga teachers na gumagamit ng account that you can also use. And then, of course, YouTube, pwede ka kumuha ng videos from YouTube na ipapasok mo dun sa, sa, sa app. And then, Khan Academy, may mga videos din sila. National Geographic, TED Talks, and kung kayo mahilig kayo gumawa ng mga sarili nyong videos, mga tutorial yo and everything, pwede nyo rin siyang ipasok sa Edpuzzle. So, para na rin kayong nagde-discuss sa mga sudyante nyo. Kunyari, gawa kayo ng, ng video nyo na nagde-discuss and then ilalagay niya lang siya doon. Um, tapos, bakit siya kakaiba for, from other app? So, of course, it's free. It saves time. Kasi meron na siyang mga ready-made na videos there. Tapos, it's easy to access kasi pwede ka, mag-ano ka lang ng um, codes na ibibigay sa kanila. So, pwedeng ibibigay mo yung link. Pwede rin may code per class. Kasi gagawa ka ng class mo eh. So, kunyari, I, like me, I handle six um, sections. So, syempre, mas maganda yun, iba-iba yung codes para hindi sila nagsasama-sama sa isang, sa isang account lang ng, ng Edpuzzle. Tapos, pwede siyang discussion, reinforcement, assessment tool. And then, if you have your own um, LMS, kunyari, may, meron kayo, Genio, ganon. So, pwede nyo siyang i-embed doon. Meron kayong pwedeng gawin na, na step para maipasok siya doon sa inyong program na meron kayo kung meron kayo sa school nyo. And then, kunyari, tulad nyan, meron kayo isa. Tatlo kayo sa team or apat. Pwede nyo siyang i-share sa colleagues nyo. So, pare-pareho kayo nang pwedeng gamitin. Next, um, so, bakit din siya good for students? Kasi visually siya. So, syempre, nanonood sila ng video. Tapos, engage sila dun sa video. Bakit sila engage at bakit mag improve yung students learning nila? It's because yung videos, there are only three easy steps to use. So, una, hanap ka ng video. So, you have to find videos and then you have to add questions to the video while the, the, the video is being played. So, may pause moment siya para medyo magtuturo ka na, mag, uh, ano ka, mag ask ka na ng follow-up questions, whether after the part ng video or before the part ng video na gusto mo. So, and then, after mo mag-add ng questions, assign mo na agad siya sa class mo na nagawa mo. So, uh, punta tayo sa mismong Edpuzzle link. So, ito yung Ed Puzzle ko. So, ito na yung mismong account ko na ginamit ko ng for, for ilang buwan. So, as you can see here, so, ito yung Ed Puzzle account ko na ginamit ko na siya sa mga students ko. So, as you can see, meron na siyang my content. So, it means those are the videos um, na in-upload ko na dun sa Ed Puzzle account ko na nai-assign ko na sa mga students ko. So, here, like, one of the examples that I use is math antics two-step equation. So, kapag kumuha na kayo ng video, this is how it look like. So, kunyari, may video na kayo dyan. So, habang nagpi-play, if, if nakikita nyo to dito sa baba, yung may cursor ako, those are the questions na nilagay ko while they are watching the video. So, it will automatically pause on a certain part. Ayan. And yeah, nag, nag, nag-pause siya, di ba? Parang, nag, uh, parang nag, may, may ikot-ikot. Kasi wow. sa baba, meron siyang open-ended question na nilagay ko. So, how will they answer it? They have to watch the video. Kasi yung sagot nandoon sa kaninang sinabi dun sa video. So, pag sasagot ka na, example, what are the inverse operations of addition and multiplication? So, subtraction and division. So, isa-submit lang nila. Tapos, magpapasok na siya dun sa teacher's account mo na ev later on, pwede mo na siyang i-grade. Tapos, continue ulit. 
mag- and to undo those two operations. So, pag kinutin mo siya, siya ulit, mag-play ulit yung video until it goes to the next question. So, kunyari, tulad this video, I, I put like 14 questions. So, na kung paano gagawin in step. So, kung may tutorial kayo na gagawin, pwede mo silang tatanungin doon. And then, after a while, babalik na siya ng um, presentation ng answers ng gusto mo. Tapos mag-feedback na sila. So, yan ay if you will upload a video from YouTube. So, paano mo siya i-assign sa classes mo? So, katulad nito, in-assign ko siya this are the this is my first period. So, kung makikita nyo dyan, yeah, I already put, yan, addition, multiplication, tapos meron siyang start date, due date, so, tapos kung sino yung nag-turn in, ilang yung batang nag-turn Then, isang challenge is, hindi mo pwedeng, don't assume na matatapos nila yun sa due date na binigay mo. Because definitely, most of them won't. So, ang kagandahan din ng Edpuzzle is pwede mong i-extend yung due date niya. Anytime. Kung gusto mo, i-extend mo siya ulit ng one week, walang problema. Kung ang goal mo lang is, Kung ang goal mo lang is um, matuto sila ng certain competency na magagamit nila, okay siya. And then, yan, meron akong mga first period, third period. So, kung gagawa kayo ng other class, ayan, add new class. Tapos, nagbibigay lang kayo ng certain code. So, you can also use Google Classroom or create a new class para enter class name tapos yun na tapos bibigyan niyo sa kanila yung link so magbibigay siya ng link na inviting the um, you will invite your students kasi eto tulad niyan invite ayan nakikita niyo sa screen merong how to join an open class open class yung ginamit ko kasi yung iba nga hindi sila makapasok dun sa portal namin dun sa LMS namin so Ibibigay mo lang yung link. Kunyari, email lang ang meron kayo uh, na pwede mong isend sa parent. O, oh, here are the tasks po. Tapos, open, copy link mo lang yan. Pwede mo na sa kanilang isend kasi makakapasok na sila dyan. So, how to do a lesson from that? So, example, punta tayo dun sa my content. Meron ako kasing nilagay na isa. So, anyari, ito yung napili mong video. Ed puzzle video siya. Ibig sabihin, um, nailagay na siya ng isang teacher from another, um, nyari, from YouTube, nilagay niya na sa kanya. So, pwede mo siya i-edit. Kinlik ko siya. So, pwede mo siya i-edit. And then, pag nag-edit ka, yan. Ito yung video, pwede ka mag-voice over. What do you mean by voice over? So, pwede ikaw mismo yung nagsasalita doon kung gusto mo. So, replace the video's existing audio. Then, kunyari, nag-play na siya, tapos gusto mo ilagay yung questions mo somewhere here dito sa gitna. So, put the questions at marami siyang choices na questions. So, multiple choice question and dito yung question mo. Then, you can put two or more choices para para hindi ka na masyado mahirapan mag-grade. Diba? Usually, pag, pag uh, maraming gine-grade or chine-check, medyo mas mahirap. So, kung gusto mo na multiple choice para hindi ka naman mahirapan din, pati yung mga studyante mo. Next, there's open-ended question, the one I put a while ago as an example. So, open-ended, dito yung question mo, then magkakaroon lang sila ng parang space where to type their um, their answers. And notes, kunyari gusto mo maglagay ng reminders dito, pwede ka rin maglagay dyan. And then, easy as that, save mo lang. And then, you already have your lesson in Edpuzzle. So, medyo madali naman din siya even with looking at the reports kasi lalabas na rin yung reports niya. So, medyo madali naman siya i-explore when you are in the site and it's free. That's for my first sharing for the program or app na pwede niyong gamitin. And then, for the next one, Nearpod. I've been using it like, especially pag mahilig ka gumawa ng presentation. So, meron tayong mga PowerPoint, Google Slides, and everything. Nearpod is actually a platform that can create more engaging presentations. Bakit siya engaging? Because while you are doing presentations, you can embed some games, videos, links, poll, and everything. So, meron siyang lessons. Pwede ka maglagay ng lessons, quiz, polls, videos, images, drawing boards. Parang katulad nung pag meron ka, kunyari, um, pwede ka mag-discuss doon, pwede rin sila mag-draw doon. Kunyari, ang hinihingi sa'yo na lesson, eh, kailangan nilang mag-draw. So, pwede din yun. And, um, virtual field trips. So, pwede siyang 360 na 
um, images. So, depende sa pwede mo makuha. And many more. Actually, marami siyang, maraming pwedeng gawin sa Nearpod. So, bakit for teachers? First, free siya. Second, ready-made presentations. Meron na rin kasing mga gumagamit. So, pwede mo na siya ma-access. And accessible because you're just going to use codes, phone. Pwede ka gumamit ng kahit anong gadget with Nearpod. Pero, advisable siya kung tablet or or touch screen na something na na laptop bakit mas 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 okay sana na ganun kasi syempre meron kang mga activities na magdo-drawing sila so medyo mahirap mag-drawing kapag maliit yung screen de ba pero kung kung ang ano mo talaga is like powerpoint presentation okay yung nearpad kasi para ka na rin nagpe-present ng lesson so like um, ed puzzle discussion reinforcement assessment tool din siya kasi it will give you reports at the end of, of everything na ginawa ng bata. And you can also share it with your colleagues. So, for students, visual and fun, and any gadgets, like what I've said, and then engaging siya. Lalo na kung nagbibigay ka ng mga poll and everything or collaborative um, uh, work questions, sobrang ma-engage sila kasi nag-iisip sila ng nandun sa screen, magta-type lang sila. And then, three is it, um, steps to use. So, unang step is just find presentations or if meron na kayong ready-made na PowerPoint, i-upload nyo lang siya doon. And then, design, i-design nyo lang so pwede kayong mag-design uh, doon ng uh, kung ano yung flow ng lesson nyo. Kung gusto nyo mag-start ng game, kung gusto nyo mag-start ng video, pwede. And then, katulad din, lagi, you assign it to your class. So, let's go to Nearpod. Yan. Okay. So, ito yung mga ginamit ko for the past months and sa buong taon. So, katulad nito, ito yung isa sa inano ko sa kanila. Solving two-step equations. Hindi siya sa akin. So, kinuha ko lang siya from another source, from another teacher. Pero I can use it as live lesson. So, when we were not yet in distance learning, I use it as live lesson. Para nakikita ko silang gumagawa. And pero since nasa distance learning tayo, pwede siyang student fa- student um based. So when you say student based na, lalabas na syempre kung ano yung kung kailan nila gusto gawin as long as maka nakita niyo to. So meron siyang code na ibibigay na pwede mong ibigay sa estudyante through text or email or either here's the code and they can already go there or gusto mo rin pwede din yung link ibibigay mo lang din sa kanila para mapag napuntahan nila yung lessons. Pwede na nilang gawin. So, ex- let's look at a preview of this lesson. So, may- meron din siya. Ang maganda sa kanya is, kunyari, namumoblema ka for your next lesson. Meron din siyang related content on the side. So, more or less, it follow then um, a certain curriculum of, you know, your lessons, your flow. Oh, solving two step Ah, ito pala. Meron pala problem. Na related. So, katulad niyan, solving. Um, yan, kung anong gusto mong pagawa sa kanila. Example. So, this is what I did with them. So, tulad nito, binigyan lang muna siya ng steps on how to solve two-step equation. And then, may video. May video na magpe-play. Tapos, ituturo sa kanya kung um, how to do it. And then, the next slide. Ayan magbibigay siya ng questions, examples, and then, this is the time that the students will do their own, can you see the, there's, there's, there are buttons here that they can write on, they can write the answer here, so what's the inverse operation, so they will just like, write it la- that way, so plus five, kung paano siya tinuro from the previous examples, mas magaguide siya, mas maganda kung meron kang stylus, pero kung wala, medyo, ano lang, tulad, now I'm using mouse, Yan. Tapos, simplify. So, magsosolve ka. Tapos, ang gagawin ng students is submit lang. Tapos, lalabas na siya later on dun sa kung paano nila din rowing yun. So, I'm gonna show you the reports. Okay. So, reports. Yan. Fetching reports. So, ito na yung, ito na yung napagawa ko sa kanila. So, makikita nyo dito merong seven students. Ito, I did this. Nag-extend ako. Kung, kung makikita nyo, tatlong beses ako nag-assign. <laughs> Kasi hindi nila na-meet yung deadline. So, nag-assign ulit ako and then it will give you another code. Yan. Tulad yan. As you can see, my students, ano yung participation nila? Ano yung din nila? So, makikita nyo dyan kung ilan yung nag-skip, ilan yung nagsagot. 
Tapos you can download reports din. Kasi there are there are ito this this presentation konti lang yung laman. So medyo um madali siyang tingnan. Some some presentations sobrang haba na may draw it, may poll, may quiz and everything. So madali na meron na siya ang agad na as- assessment. So me- medyo mas madali siya for the teachers to assess kung may natutunan nga sila. So I'll just um give you a quick way of um doing a lesson. Kunyari, li- lesson in your pod. If you are very much used to this na, para lang siyang PowerPoint. So, add slide, and then it will ask you, ano, kunyari, add content. So, add content, add slide. Pwede ka nang mag-type. Uh, kunyari, yan. Click to add title, example, uh, addition. Then, save mo lang. Then, next title. Or, pwede ka rin mag-upload ng files galing sa sarili mong um, syempre, galing sa sarili mong files. So, upload mo lang siya, i-drag mo lang siya, and then save. Then, example, gusto mo maglagay ng web content. So, URL lang. Kunyari, gusto mo magpalaro ng games or anything na video or whatsoever na gusto nilang yung URL lang, lalagay mo dyan. Then, naka-embed na siya dun agad. Plus, Meron din siyang activities, last but not the least, yung time to climb. So, game siya, open-ended questions, matching pairs, quiz. Kung gusto niyo mag-quiz, meron din. Flip grid. Then, draw it. Yun yung sinasabi ko kanina, pwede sa mag-drawing. And then, collaborate. Then, poll. Kung meron kayong botohan ba, kunyari, gagawa kayo ng graph and everything. O, yan, madali na. Favorite colors, example. So, graph, may poll na doon. Easy na, makakapag-ano na sila. Kung gusto niyo talaga ng presentation, Nearpod is really good for that. So, I can suggest it na malaki talaga yung matutulong niya <laughs> for, for doing presentations. So, I think that's it. Yeah, that's good. Right. Nice. Ganda, ganda. Nice. Thank you, uh, Ms. Raquel, for sharing that. Very interesting, no? Um, pwede ba siya sa ibang subject? Like, gagawa ka ng sarili mo? Hmm. Mm. Actually, kasi ano siya eh? Um, parang tool lang naman siya kung tool lang naman siya kung magpe-present ka. Di ba, use tayo sa classroom na merong na magpa-PowerPoint presentation, na magpapawatch ng video. So, for Edpuzzle, gagamitin mo lang siya kasi kailangan niyang pumasok sa account ng student kung meron kayong sariling LMS. Kung wala naman, may link siya. So, pwede mong balikan. Eh, so, pwede mong maklik, maklik mo lang yung link even with phone. Pwede niya nalang hmm. ma-access ma- agad yun. Kung wala silang LMS, they can still use that. Yep. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you can still do the assessment like you can you can see the, the um, core of the students. For the teachers to have their own laptop kasi maliit tulad nito. I'm already using I'm using uh, my laptop now pero maliit pa yung screen niya. So how much more kung ang teacher ay cellphone ang gamit. Pero sa estudyante, walang problema 'yun kasi in, kung kunyari, ang cellphone mo is maliit lang ang screen, tapos presentation lang, siguro, ang mas ma, ang masasuggest ko lang doon sa teachers kapag gagawa kayo, huwag masyadong madami yung nakalagay sa, sa ano. Huwag masyadong maraming nakalagay yung sa slide. Kasi if you think that the, the students are having like how many inch lang na cellphone, isu-zoom out pa nila, medyo mag-ano pa, parang mas mahihirapan po. So, I think kung gagawa kayo ng presentations, if you're gonna use Nearpod or Edpuzzle, make it sure na medyo maliit, malaki yung font para mas madali. Mas madali siya makita. Alright, thank you. No? Maganda to. Magagamit din sa iba uh, in general. No? Yeah. Um, Sir Maynard, meron ka pa bang may share? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, sige. Puro uh, mga, ano, mga tips. Isang app. Sa ating mga, oh, mga tips sa ating mga teachers. Yeah, share siya. Oh. Oh, 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 see. You go ahead. Yeah, and then let's see, uh, see Mom Karen. Mm-hmm. All right, so hi again. Okay, so uh, as an online teacher, I want to share uh, one application that is really um, helpful for those who are teaching lower le- lower levels, especially. Okay, so because as an online teacher, I believe that it's really more effective if you're going to put uh, some props, realia. All right, so during your class. Okay, so uh, basically I want to share this one app. Okay. Can you see it, guys? 
Yes. Yeah, we can share a screen. Okay. All right, so that's awesome. Okay, so this is what we call Manicam. Okay, so Manicam is provided by our company, but you can actually look for it in Google and try to do uh, the free trial. Okay, so here, because in our company, we are actually requiring our teachers to have um, a background like this, and we are actually required uh, to use props, realia, TPRs, and like that. Okay, so with the use of this app, uh, you can actually utilize this one. For example, the student uh, can understand what you're trying to say. Okay, for example, uh, you're trying to present a bunch of bananas. Okay, so you can actually grab this one. It's like a Snapchat. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a Snapchat. And if you're familiar with the chroma key, okay, it's a chroma key. All you have to do is just provide a green screen background. And you can actually use this one and change your background into this. Okay, so let me show you. So basically, yun lang yung, ano, yung function niya. Okay, then you can draw, okay, and add some objects uh, if you have presentation video. All right, so once again, it's Manicam. So there's a free trial for this one. Okay, I think that will be all. All right, thank you, say, uh, Sir Maynard. Okay, let's hear it from Miss Karen. Okay. Here, is, this is only short. I use Bitmoji. It's the same with Manicam and the one that Miss Raquel shared a while ago. So here, you can make your own emoticons, use um, animation to your Bitmoji. So you can download it in App Store or in Apple Store Google and Play. Google Play. So you can also um, record your voice, just what... Um, Hi, class. Keep safe, everyone. So you can also add your own voice in your Bitmoji. You can also link resources. some resources. So for example, I used this one before in my class. So you can use this one as your presentation as well. And it can be your interactive classroom. The children can also navigate this. They can go to Google. Awesome. Yeah, Google Classroom, and then you can show this in your slides. So here, for example, um, if you want to explain what's happening around us, like for example, about coronavirus to small children, you can um, choose any books that you like. Of course, it should be age-appropriate. So for me, for preschoolers, so I chose this book, and then you can just link the YouTube YouTube in here and then when you click this or when your students click that it will go directly to the to the channel that you want them to watch yeah to watch and I also uh, recommend this safe youtube.net so that nothing will pop up like yeah. for example nude pictures or anything that distract them so you can just go here Type the link and then just copy it in your here in your Bitmoji interactive classroom. So, for example, if your children wants to communicate with you, if they cannot understand anything about your what you're saying, they can just click you here and then it will go directly to your account. The children can just click on your Bitmoji and then it will go directly to your account, to your personal account or your educational account. And then for example, okay. um, you want the children to enhance their questioning skill. So they will just click here and it will go directly to wonderopolis.org and they can ask anything, ask anything here and then here, it will develop their questioning skill and at the same time, you will ask them, okay, what's on your mind today? So anything, any question that's in their mind, they can just type in here and you can answer it together. And then the next one, so these are Bitmoji Interactive Classroom. It's like a PowerPoint as well, but this one, um, it's more on personalized because you will be the one to put the blackboards here, the shelves here, yourself, and your voice. That's, and then... That's a bit more job, Karen. That's Karen Salazar. Yeah. And then... What else? Here, 
also this one is a fun um, games. I used this one before when I was teaching second grade. So it's like a brain brain breaks. You can use this one because this one these games are motivational and work as well with my children before because they are tech savvy and the students are engaged to the point where they didn't even realizing that they are learning. It also improves and help retention in different lessons at the same time is fun. So you can also download it on Google Play and App Store. So this one is accessible for all and you can choose the subjects that you like. And it's for all grade levels until grade six. So for example, I want my children to learn about basic addition. So I just play this one. So here, I want to learn basic addition, so just click the play button, write, the, write your name or write the name of your student, then just follow the instruction, and you can choose the game speed. It can be slow, normal, or fast. Then next, click to play. Then here, five. So they will just choose what's the correct answer to get the five. What are the, uh, for example, five. So. What's the answer? 3 plus 3. No. <laughs> so 3 plus 2. Yes. And then that's it. So this one is uh, our kid plus academic. So it's fun for little children. So for example, I want to focus in language art. This one, word from. So it's free if you want uh, your children to learn about so it's just the same thing just type in your name or your student's name and then you want to learn about antonyms synonyms or hopeful and then click to play then antonyms then and what's the antonym so now there Okay, that's it. So, it's a fun game for the children. And at the same time, it's fun. And at the same time, you can choose uh, the grade level that you want. And then the next one, if you want to have like a uh, bonding with your children, it's a fa fun family bonding. And it develops healthy habits. And then they can also use it uh, like a life skill when they grow up. So you can choose this highlights kid. So if you want the children to learn about how to make simple recipe, so you can choose this one. And then here, they can watch different videos that show how to make onigiri. So here, there's uh, the list of the things that they need and what to do. So it's like uh, a book, yeah, an online book that they can follow. So you can choose any kind of recipe that they like. So why I'm sharing this because, because it develops also their gross and fine motor skills and then it expands the vocabulary of the children and it's also a following instruction yeah, it's a good bonding with the uh, uh, parents can join their kids on how to uh, make this uh, activity yeah that's it okay so they can choose anything that they want to make some simple recipe so it's not only activities their jokes games explore share and listen so here they can also listen to some podcasts that they are interested in so for example they want to learn about space so they can listen to this podcast just play it and then they will learn a lot of things so there's also some things to explore yeah, if they are into dinosaurs or animals, they can just choose whatever they like. And then 
if they like dinosaurs, there's all things about dinosaur. And after that, you can ask questions. And then the next one. So here, of course, it's very important to have our physical activities. So this one is a kids workout and you can also join your kids. And then develop their gross and fine motor skills and to develop their healthy habits in a small space. So here, just go here and Click the one that you like. Strength for kids, agility, flexibility, warm out, cool down, or some movements for the kids. So here, you can select your workout. And you can choose how many minutes do you like. So for example, only two or three minutes and then select minutes. Then begin workout. So here, you can choose... Here we go. We'll start off with a warm up to yeah. get things moving. So this one, your I children can follow this instruction. Begin. And of course, start so that you will not feel bored, you, you can add also music height. to this. As Just click the... the when you're right. the uh, you can, uh, you can uh, add music coming from Apple Music or Spotify. Or Spotify. So here, just use this one. So that one, you can... You can do your workout while having some music. So there. So you can do your workout with music. And the last one. Stop it. Okay, and the last one is this one. So, if your children are allergic to anything, like for example, this one is for ages 2 to 12. Younger kids need more grown-up help and do better with shorter cook times. Older kids can work more independently and handle longer recipes. So, it is a website with recipe picture books for kids ages 2 to 12 and their grown-ups. So, kids learn about cooking techniques, food science, culture of food, and nutritional facts. So here, they can choose breakfast, snack, dinner, dessert, holiday, all kinds of recipe. So for example, I chose PB and J burrito. So it's also the same with the highlight kids that I shared a while ago. It's fun family banding and then it develops healthy habits and they can also use it when they are grown-ups already for life skills so a lot of learning is hidden in cooking so they can learn literacy math social studies science motor and cognitive skills so here so here are the recipe and the overview on how to do it because some learners of course there are visual some learners are visual learners and then here are the grocery list so you can also Use this for math because of the measurement. And of course, if they are allergic, so there's some suggested substitution for your ingredients and the tools needed. And those are tools for the guardians or parents. And here, it's nice because you can also see where the ingredients originated. Like for example, if it includes peanut butter, so they will watch it where the peanut butter came from. And some children also um, upload their video while doing the activity. This is the Hall of Fame. Whenever they are done with their with their um, cooking activity, they can post their pictures together with their out output. Mm -hmm. And for example, they are allergic to dairy products. So they can choose this one. And then after a while, there are some suggested recipes that are dairy-free. So if they are vegan, gluten-free, wheat-free. So those, those are the choices. So that's it. So this is a good bonding with your with your kids and students as well. I used this one before when we have our clubs. So I just go here and check out the different recipes. 
for all ages. Thank you, Miss Karen. All right, so there you go, guys. So I think everybody um, already shared their piece of advice, tips, strategies, approaches, and application softwares. So there's a lot of ideas that uh, we can use uh, doing our online learning, uh, distance learning. And you can always personalize these approaches and ideas and software. Uh, uh, it depends to how you will use it to integrate it into your um, subject area. I hope you learn a lot from us uh, today. And if you have any questions or recommendations about the next webcast, but if you want a personal guide from one of our uh, guests here, from Sir Joel and Karen Diamano, uh, Miss Raquel Aguilar, uh, Mr. Uh, Sir Maynard, uh, and Sir Banag, you, you can always contact them using um, their email. Or you can comment um, here on the video so that we will contact you. you. Just give your email email ad and then we will respond to your questions. Right? And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Uh, we're doing educational videos and webcasts. Something about uh, music, arts, and almost everything about education. So if you want to uh, request some important or some interesting topics about um, education or approaches, strategies, just uh, put it on the comment section and we will try to find um, a very reliable uh, resource person to interview and to make a web webcast about that. Okay, thank you for your time and I want to thank all of my guests, my friends, these are all my friends and for a uh, former uh, Salishan educators of Makati. Thank you so much for your time. I know we are so busy and some of us uh, came from from work and we're kind of exhausted for the whole day of you know uh, errands but you still make it to uh, share to our viewers hindi lang sa Don Bosco no? but I think it will reach a lot of teachers in the Philippines and maybe in some parts of the, the uh, globally you know, world. All right. So, we will end the webcast uh, the webcast here. Thank you so much for your time and you you can always replay the webcast to to browse the um, the applications that we shared today. Thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye.